Hey guys! Okay, so a few days ago I posted a video that sparked some conversation in both the MMA, BJJ, Jiu Jitsu, and karate communities. I honestly had no idea it was gonna like bring so many comments and so much feedback, but basically it was a video of me showing just a simple uh, two block pattern, so a soto uke followed by a geiran uke, and like what could be done against a grappler. Well, that's the thing that I think kind of got everybody up in arms is because I used anti-grappler in the title, and then I said, this is what we can do against a grappler. So before we start, uh, I'd like to define grapple. So the definition of grapple, I had to write it down, is engage in a close fight or struggle without weapons, there's one, or seize or hold with a grapnel. Now, I don't know what a grapnel is, but it seems pretty serious. But never in the video did I ever say, like, this is what you should do against all BJJ fighters. This is what you should do against somebody who trains Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Jiu-Jitsu or any kind of Greco-Roman wrestling or anything like that. It was just like, this is a video about somebody who grapples or who might tie up or who might go to grab you. Now, again, context is out. I'm going to address that. I get it. This was actually... A smaller spliced up video of a much larger video that we did with long range attacks, mid range attacks, the grappling or grabbing type attacks, um, multiple punch attacks, and it was simply utilizing this kihon nihon kata. That's all it was. Okay, calm down. Um, but what I thought was really interesting is that the BJJ MMA uh, Jiu Jitsu community started to comment. And when they started to comment, um, some of the comments were like downright, like nasty, foul language, um, cussing at me, you know, all of those types of things. In fact, I actually had to delete some of those comments. I have no problem with constructive criticism. I mean, like, you have to have a pretty thick skin if you're going to post stuff on, on YouTube, especially in the martial arts community. But what I do have a problem with is that I own a karate school, and we have kids at our karate school, and some of those kids have YouTube accounts. And when they have YouTube accounts, they go on YouTube, and they look at our channel. And I think it's fantastic. But what they don't need to see is derogatory, nasty comments cussing, foul language, here's the crazy thing. It's only coming from like maybe a small portion of karate people. I can't even say that it's all coming from this other group, but it's really, it's coming from, and you can tell kind of by the screen names, it's coming from this kind of like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Jiu Jitsu group. And I just thought it was really interesting. Um, and I'm sorry, I just, I don't need some meathead making derogatory comments and then our kids seeing it. So I, I had to delete some. So hey, criticize away. I'm totally fine with that. As stated, the context of the entire video was missing. I get it. It was spliced together. It was a minute long. Not a biggie. But you don't have to be a meanie about it. The other thing is, is that I just found this out was that it was also shared um, to a few different like Facebook groups, like karate Facebook groups, but um, particularly one that I didn't even know about, the moderator of the group shared it to the group. And they, um, I didn't know this. And so when I found this out, someone had told me about it. And when I found it out, they, uh, I went on um, the group and I looked and it had already, I think there were like 70 some odd comments. So, I went on and I was looking at the comments and although some were constructive and and obviously again with the context thing which I'll, I'll address um, they were for the most part very respectful and it actually ended up kind of like sparking another conversation not even particularly about the video but just kind of like cross training and grappling and um, stand-up fighting versus ground fight like all of this stuff and I thought that was really cool that that would just kind of um, take off on its own and spark some new different conversation. So I, I definitely, um, I just kind of started posting videos, even though our channel's been up for quite a while and um, we have over 6,000 subscribers. So I, I'm just started posting myself, 
but the I've never seen such a divide of the different communities and their comments. And I just, I thought that was interesting. I'm just being objective and looking at, at that, at just from that perspective. Just, I just thought it was a really interesting thing, seeing kind of these traditional karate people sparking conversations and talking about very training um, modalities. And then to kind of see this other side of just like, kind of like jerks, to be honest. <laughs> um, but so in this group, I started looking at the comments. And one of the things is, is that there is kind of like this group of karate people who do a lot of online things, so, you know, like the Jesse Ann Camps or the Ian Abernathy's, and they do a lot of the online stuff. Um, and so this particular group, I wanted to just call out, if you guys are okay with that, I hope you are, because it's going to get published anyway, but I'm going to call out names. And, um, it's because these are the guys that like, I follow these guys. I watch their videos. I, I do some of their training stuff. And I think it's really cool that they're kind of having conversations about this. So first of all, Andy Allen, thank you for posting it. Thank you for, um, seeing kind of the bigger picture because we had that conversation that you like, you, you knew it was kind of spliced up. And so obviously the context of the entire thing, I get that was missing. We'll do a follow-up video because, I mean, this is kind of a follow-up video, but I'll be filming, like, the other stuff. Um, so thank you for seeing the bigger picture, clearly. And then also, Chris Hansen, you made a comment about, like, I had said in the video, like, you know, my sensei always says, a boxer, don't box a boxer. Don't uh, judo throw a judo guy. Don't grapple a grappler. And you had mentioned about cross-training. And I 100% believe in cross-training. Um, in fact, in our dojo... Uh, in, in our dojo and in karate, and I don't know if some of you guys do this or not, like with your schools, but in karate, we study the five elements. So that would be locking, throwing, grappling, choking, and striking. So we have to study all of those things. And I think a lot of people have a misconception that karate is just kind of like this linear, stand-up, striking art, and that's all karate people do. Um, but there's so much more to it. And I think like when I was reading some of those comments, that's what kind of spurred that conversation was that there's just so much more. And what I do find also, and, and this is my own personal experience, is that I see that there are definitely, in my opinion, more karate people who cross train than the latter. So I, I think there's more karate people that are doing like Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, um, oh gosh, Krav Maga, kickboxing, what have you versus like the MMA guys who, or I shouldn't say, because I know MMA consists of different arts, but like I'm talking about like more of like that kind of group that really wouldn't walk into a karate school or maybe go and learn Aikido or something like that. Um, if you think about it, like look at the MMA fighters who are also karate cop. And again, I'm old, so old school, but I'm thinking of like people like Machida, GSP, Liddell, and honestly, when you watch them fight, at least what I've seen, is that there is a different level of respect and decorum in the ring. There just is. Um, so anyway, just my observations of just posting this video and then seeing all of this spark, all this stuff that I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. The other thing is, as far as cross-training, is... Um, well, one of the stories that I have is we, when I'm, when I'm talking about like, don't box a boxer, I'm not saying don't go to a boxing gym and learn how to box. I'm saying that if you are an Aikido practitioner, you're probably not going to stand toe to toe with a boxer and then try to play his game box. I wouldn't do that. I, I would think that other people wouldn't do that. Would you want to learn some of the skills, the boxing skills? Absolutely. In fact, um, we had a boxer who came to our dojo and we were all sparring because we used to do like the, all these inner dojo sparring kind of things. And this is at my karate school and we're all sparring and he came in and some of us tried to play his game. Like we, we were standing in range boxing with him, not utilizing our legs, even though it was kind of like open sparring, like, Hey, you do you. Um, and it wasn't until we were like, okay, so we're getting all these combos thrown at us. Um, even though some of us had, boxing experience or boxing training, that doesn't mean that that's what we were doing on a daily basis. 
And so we ended up inevitably keeping him away with sidekicks. Well, once we got our distance and we were just throwing sidekicks, he couldn't get in on anybody. So it would just be like, you know, my, my whole thought process behind that is like, don't box a boxer. Don't stand there with a guy that's going to deck you. Um, the other thing is, is that Sensei Pogue, and if you guys are subscribers to the channel or have watched any of the channel, I'm assuming you would know that Sensei Pogue passed away three years ago. Um, he was my partner, my soulmate, the love of my life. We uh, started Peaceful Warrior in 2010, and when he died, a group of us, uh, the core students and the core instructors, we all kept it together, and it's still going and it's thriving. So thank goodness for that. But even in a previous video, Sensei Pogue, and, and, and a few videos, he said specifically, like, he 100% believes you should learn how to grapple. You should absolutely learn how to grapple. Not so much to grapple for grappling's sake, but if you get into a situation with a grappler, you don't want to panic. You want to be able to get out of that situation so you can get back to your feet, start striking. That's in our list of videos. He trained in multiple, multiple arts. He did Aikido. He did shoot boxing. He did karate. He did Ryukyu Kenpo. He, I mean, you name it, he did it. Um, every Kobudo system you could imagine, he did uh, Eskrima. He came to my dojo. He trained Kinshoto with me. Like, he, he just soaked it in like a sponge. So as far as cross-training goes, I... I have never said anything about not cross-training. In fact, I think it's amazing. I think you should 100% do it. Um, and I do think that you should do it as long as it pertains to what your core is. You know, like with Sensei Pogue, like his core was always shore and row. No matter how many systems he trained in, his core was always shore and row. Um, it's just like me. My core is Kenshoto, but I'm training in different systems as well. But I always... That base, I think we, we kind of tend, we always go back to that base. So anyway, that's to Chris's point. A um, couple people that commented, let's see, Daniel, Pyatt, Matthew Deere, Maul, Sanchez Jones, you guys were talking about distancing and disengaging. Of course, I teach women self-defense. The last thing we want to do is get grabbed. I don't want to get grabbed by somebody. So yeah, I mean, if someone's coming up to me to grab me, 100%, I'm going to keep my distance. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, here, I'll tie up and I'm going to show you. Oh, look at this. I'm not going to do that. I'm obviously going to keep my distance. Um, but again, with the context of the video, it was spliced up. So we had already covered kind of some long range stuff, some mid range stuff. And then we were moving on to, oh crap, what happens if somebody grabs onto you? <clears throat> we have um, had people come through our school who are wrestlers or like they were wrestlers in high school or stuff like that. And they do, they have a tendency to, they want to get in, they want to get in, they want to grab you, they want to throw you. Um, it takes a while for them to improve on their striking, just like it would take a while for strikers to improve on their grappling game. So, I mean, same difference. Um, uh, Paul Enfield, you had said something about like, you know, most times people wouldn't be stopping in the middle of their technique to explain. I don't know about you, but I've traveled a lot to karate seminars and demonstrations and karate camps and things like that. And I can honestly say that, you know, the more you, it, it, and again, my opinion, but the more you um, explain things in a very simplistic way, uh, I would think that the journey of a karate ka is to take something that might be explained in a very simple way and then they build on it. Andy Allen says, add dirt. Absolutely, add dirt for sure. Um, so I would think that if you're explaining something and you're just showing something, like a tutorial kind of thing, it's like, here's the moves and now you should go out and you should see if it works for you, see if you can add your own spin to it, put it in your toolbox if you want it. But I've literally been at like camps, not just like short route camps, but I'm talking about like camps or big time seminars with like big time instructors where I'm standing next to like a fifth degree black belt and something that I think is like a simple thing, like a lapsau or something like that, they're like, minds are blown. So I find more like explaining things simplistically is probably something that might help. Um, and... Uh, and, and then sometimes like I've been, I myself have been to demonstrations where um, I'm trying something and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what's happening right now. 
So, you know, people learn differently. Uh, and again, I think part of the journey is that you take something that you see and you run with it or you don't, you add your own spin, you try it out on different people and you just see if it's something that you can use. Even if it's just that little nugget, um, you know, it's something that you might be able to use. So, and then also just to make a point, I've been playing catch up for three years since, since they poked died, even though we started Peaceful Warrior in 2010. So we've been doing Shore and Rue in addition to a lot of my stuff for my system. Um, I, I was training my system. That's my system. I was training Kinshoto. And so when he passed away and we decided like, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to keep the dojo. We're running with this thing. Let's go. I've had to, in the past three years, learn 21 kata, seven Yakusoku Kumite, in addition to the rest of our belt sheets. You see these belt sheets? Do you see these? And the rest of the belt sheets. So not only do I do my own system, but I've had to play catch up for three years and learn all of this stuff so I can teach it. Um, the thing is, is that in learning this, that's when your eyes get open. And it's like, oh my gosh, now that I feel like I have this kata down, you know, pinan shodan, I've got that down. I feel like I've got that down. Now is when your eyes start opening up to all of the levels of bunkai and everything like that. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm seeing um, in this in this system now that every now and then I just have like one of those aha moments and I'm like, oh, I just saw this or this translates to this or whatever. And, and again, I think that's part of the journey. Um, I think, I guess you could, and, and what I saw from those comments, I guess you could, you could sit behind your screen, take a drink of your Tang or your Sunny Delight, stretch your fingers and type away. Awesome, shout out to the keyboard warriors. Or you could take something and go, hmm, let's see how this plays out. Because I think like remaining curious and remaining kind of like that beginner's mind, like what karate, like what we all talk about, um, I really think that that is super important when you're training because I think that as soon as you think that you know everything, you know it all, and there's plenty of those people in the karate community as well, but as soon as you think you know it all, I think you just shut yourself down to all these amazing possibilities um, that you could have discovered if you just had an open mind. And also, I want to thank Daniel Marino for just, he's such a breath of fresh logic, truly. So thank you. Um, and I think you know what I'm talking about. And so put it in your toolbox. Don't put it in your toolbox. Whatever. But... What I also think is interesting because, like, some of the comments that came through, like, she, oh, that's all she got, bread. Um, <laughs> I, the very next day, like, as soon as the first couple comments came in, I called or reached out to one of the jujitsu guys that trains. He does, like, the, some of the fitness classes in our school. And I know he trains jujitsu and he also trains Muay Thai. And I reached out to him, and maybe I'm wrong on that Muay Thai or Krav Maga, one of the two. Sorry, Chris. But anyway, I reached out to him and I was like, okay, I made this video. I got some comments. I wanted to see, you know, how, how this works, like against someone who's like going after it. And we worked together. We were training the very next day. I didn't just like shut down and go, oh, well, I guess that's it. You know, I'm like, well, I want to go explore this. And that's the thing. I think that's what we should be doing. We should absolutely be going out and exploring these things. So um, you have to have a thick skin <laughs> to post on YouTube um, or to post in any kind of like public forum because holy cow, uh, as much as the comments are nice, they can be nasty as well. And you've just got to be able to just kind of like go, okay, guys. Um, okay, thank you. And um, so anyway, uh, this prompted me to make a new video and I will add the context and my goal is to also make sure that like we're, we're trying it in different 
uh, arenas as well. The other thing is, real quick, sorry, I know we're, I'm already going on almost 20 minutes because this is a, this is a full on rant. Um, you can skip this, by the way, and go straight to the video. But the other thing is, is that you don't know the situation. Like, that's the thing. Sometimes some of these guys are like, well, they're just training for the cage. They're just training for competition. Like, they're just training in the dojo. There's so many different variables. And that's the thing is like, yeah, I can show you something or so-and-so can show me something. And realistically, there's, you know, are you protecting somebody? Are you protecting your family? Do they have a weapon? Are you outside? Do you want to go to the ground on asphalt? I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe that's all you know. Maybe that's the only thing in your wheelhouse is to take someone to the ground on asphalt. Okay, cool. You do you. Um, are there friends around? I mean, one of my friends actually got taken down um, and then got kicked in the head <laughs> because some guy's buddy, his buddy was walking around and, and, and he joined the fight. I don't know if a jujitsu guy wants to take someone down to the ground and then end up having a friend kick him in the head. I don't know. There's so many different variables. So when I show something, and I'm assuming this would be kind of with anyone, it's not the end-all be-all. It's just not. Um, Sensei Pogue learned, Richard, learned from every source he possibly could. He was on YouTube. He went to seminars. He, I mean, every thing he could possibly learn, he learned. And he adapted it to make it work for him. I mean, he had some pretty strong opinions. He had some strong opinions about some of the instructors at our own school, but he never, ever would dismiss anything that anybody taught. Um, I just, I, I want to be like him, <laughs> honestly, like to just be a total sponge and, and just continue the journey um, because I think that's what it's all about. So first things first, now that the rant is over, we're going to check out the original video. Is, is that a lot of people don't see too much is what if we have a grappler my sensei has always said don't grapple a grappler don't box a boxer right don't try to judo throw a judo guy so utilize your skills what you have if he ties up with me i don't want to tie back up with him because now both of us are just kind of in the same position we're going to turn around real quick because i'm going to use this for a strike so my soft okay now, instead of a block, it turns into a strike. So he ties up and I'm striking here. When I do that, I'm using my gain on uke, my down block there to turn his head. So go ahead and tie up, boom, strike here. Now, right there, we can get into various other kata application like our pasai and our kusanku as well. So those will be kind of in other videos. But here, this, this uh, tie up, boom, here. Now watch, when I hold onto his arm, I've got this pin. So I can do all sorts of other things. Okay. I can see where it lost some context because it was spliced up. It ends really abruptly, like I lost my Wi-Fi connection. So we are creating a new video and we're gonna show you a bunch of different things. Hey, if it works for you, cool. If you wanna dismiss it, fine. But if you wanna comment, comment and be constructive. But dudes, I can't have you guys using foul language on my YouTube channel. So kinda of calm it down a little bit. And then constructive criticism, that's fantastic. It helps everybody grow. Thank you guys for watching.